Dear Manny, of all the stories we imagined together, the one I loved the most was sneaking out into the woods. It's the one where we still live at home, where we're in high school, where we're friends from the street, and once it's lights out, I summon you by tossing pebbles at your window, where we embark on an after-hours rendezvous into the woods, where we do what we've always done, eat Snickers, smoke ciggies, stand around in oversized flannels, complain about the piano lessons forced upon us, kick a pile of leaves, sneak the occasional glance. But none of this ever happened. We didn't grow up together. I'm from California, you're from Minnesota. We met just a few years ago in our 40s, work in separate industries. We've met none of each other's inner circle, except for my friend Nick during a meditation class who would later tell me, don't remember anything Manny talked about, but wow, is he easy on the eyes. We were each other's little secret. So we gave ourselves an origin story, that we were just two kids wandering in the woods. We have no history. We have yet to have a future. We have just now. We are safe here, to our relief. We are safe from ourselves. Why this place with you? I think um, it's a fantasy of possibility, a world of no seasons and all seasons at once the period before the end of childhood, before we met, before other people, before we got lost in responsibilities and ambition, before going off to college, before our first experiences of love and sex, before, before, and before all that would come to be. Spring, Trilogy Sanctuary, a hippie spot, La Jolla. I can imagine what you saw when we first met, you must have been greeted with eyes that were at once full of joy and nerves, but also hope. And that was the part that made you look away, the hope. I said, I'm actually close friends with most of my exes. How about you? You said, most of my exes go through a period of hating me. OK, and after, I asked. <laughs> I'll text them on their birthday, you said. Looking head-on felt dangerous. We preferred instead to look in the same direction, at the sea lions on the shore forming voluptuous figures in the style of Renaissance paintings, at the seagulls circling the sky. I fought the urge to preen the nest of black hair on your head. Fast forward. You told me, I'm not ready for a relationship, I'm, uh, at least not a conventional one. Then we'll never work, I said. I'm looking for an all-options-on-the-table relationship and I'll keep searching until I find it. Then I won't ask for anything, you replied. Well then, I added, I think I'd like to stop over with you for a little while. Well, I'd like to have you here, you said. Anything else I should know? I move a lot for work. Then I'll be the first one to leave, I said. The next day, morning, you text. Are we already waking up next to each other, I typed. Just saying hi, you text. Yet you repeated this hundreds of times thereafter. Night, via text, then soon in person, in bed, morning, and a kiss on the neck. We became the people we had to have contact with. Not every day, but most days. The first person and the last person. The woods. On one of the, our after-hours outings, we solidify our, our bond in blood following the tradition of Gothic romances. We're freezing. An offset guitar picks at major and minor triads. As two bookish Asian and Indian kids, we may be AP bio on the outside, but inside, we are alternative to the core. <laughs> you bring an exacto knife from home. As for me, I sneak out mini antiseptic wipes and band-aids in a baby angel print. Standing there, we agree to take turns carving each other's initials into our palms. The temperature drops. We need to do this quickly before we chicken out. Give me your hand, you say. Your words release puffs into the night air. And when I turned my palms up under the light of the moon, I saw that your initials were already there. Let's turn them over, see? An M and an M on each hand, the man and the myth. In your own strange way, you had already imprinted on me. Summer, Fletcher's Cove, Solana Beach. I brought you to my favorite lookout spot so we can pretend to rain over the ocean. 
I just want to understand what happened with her, Manny. Your eyes shifted off frame. I was really unhappy, you began to say. Then we moved in together. I don't think I can talk about this right now. Okay, I'm sorry, let's just take in the view. Later, you say you didn't want me to see you cry, not this early on, but I already knew this, and you, kn you knew that I knew this. Our telepathy sending a flurry of signals. Increasingly, we had to remind ourselves, this is temporary. Reina and our relationship, I mean, situationship, and sometimes it was warship, but always, always a friendship. The woods. One night we get caught in a rainstorm and run for the only structure around, a freestanding info board with warnings on the possible risks ahead, what to do if you ingest poison berries or see a coyote. The shallow overhang requires us to huddle, and we do, closer than ever. Our hair is wet and matted across our foreheads. I watch you knit your brows, thinking of our parents at home separately, checking in and finding empty beds. From your back pocket, you fish out the one unharmed cigarette, which I press between my lips. You give me a light, encasing the little flame with your hand, cupping my cheek with your hand. Do you want me to move this, you ask? No, I don't. Is this okay, you ask? Yes, it's okay, I tell you. Eventually, the sky's clear and guided by a rebel moon, we make our way back home, back through our windows and back under the blankets. We don't get caught after all. We don't even catch a cold the next morning. But I know a shift has taken place, and so do you. It happens in the moments falling when your hand dropped from my cheek down to my waist, and we forget where we are. Something at the edge of the woods that had been waiting pierces the terrain and rolls through like fog. Gone are the drums and guitar. Gone is music, and it's place now a metronome leaving us on edge, the constant tick of, now what? What about after? And after that? What about tomorrow, next year? That's how it happens. Once we introduce love, time rushes through. And along with that, our past and our uncertain future, everything we wanted to forsake, time had finally come for us. Autumn, Sycamore Den, a neighborhood joint, Normal Heights. After my repeated request to meet, you agreed to come here. The room was awash in amber lighting. I swiveled over in the bar stool and demanded, what's going on? Recap of the past year. More. Enough. Let's. Can't. Now? Don't know. When? Later, maybe. You right, redirected me to the hook and ring game. I'll show you how to play this. Clearly, the premise was to make do with very little. I wanted to slap you across the face. I wanted to pour beer over your head. I wanted to take this bar fight out on the streets and into a screaming match, and then into an arm wrestle, and then into a tango, where we end up in a devastating embrace. I wanted everything except to walk away. After that evening, radio silence. A week later, I heard from you. You've been promoted. It's the big one, out of state. We won't survive the distance. We don't need to say this part out loud. Winter. Curiosity, an Indian restaurant in South Park. We had your farewell dinner at a place that reminded me of you, will always remind me of you. Everything was embellished in pink and gold, garlands of silk tassel draped from the ceiling. We barely touch when we go in for a half hug greeting, smiled meekly as if role-playing mature, well-adjusted adults. The waiter remarked how good we looked together, like a United Colors of Benetton ad. <laughs> a hopeful feeling rose inside me before I had to shoot it in the face at point blank. Maybe we both contemplated an Irish goodbye where we would flee the impending moment. There's three stories you tell ourselves. One, you love me, but I don't love you at least not in that way. Two, I love you, but you don't love me because you're a damn fool. And three, we love each other. We don't know how to be together. 
After dinner, we walked around the neighborhood admiring the bungalows with wide open porches. We pointed out the gardens overgrown with wild flowers. It was getting late, 9.15, then 9.40. We used to renegotiate what constituted late so we could tell each other one more thing. Not tonight. Talking would give us away. It was too late. We had reached my car. I fumbled for the keys. On so many occasions after that night, I let myself wonder, like, what if? What if we had kept walking? Would the memories flood back? What if you had stopped on the sidewalk to tell me what I wanted to hear? Wait. There's a fourth story we didn't consider. What's that, I ask? With an unmistakable glint in your eyes, you grab my hand and pull me on a downward slope. Crazed by the moonlight, we peel off our jackets, ditch them in the nearest bush, then pick up speed. And how can it be that the red-hot chili peppers hit under the bridge is blasting from the street lamps? We rush through the gates, nearly trip on a garden hose at some poor lady's property. Oh, shit. Our hands slip a bit, but I tighten my hold, fingernails deep digging in. I'm leading us now, my hair whipping around. We run like kids after a prank gone wrong. We pass the playground in that liquor store where we had Thai food one time. Oh, God, that face of yours, that face when you're sleeping. Might as well say it now. Toss it to the wind. I love you. Over my shoulder, you squeeze my hand to tell me, forever then past skate parks, past the meds near my bed and the tumbler of whiskey to wash it down near yours, past football fields and cemeteries, past city lights, past state borders, past racial lines, past the boundaries of you and me. We obliterate that distance by feet, then inches, then by a hair, a single dancing strand of hair, until we crash into the woods, tumble to the ground, our bodies coated with dirt and insects. In the end, we are laying side by side with our faces flattened against the damp leaves. A canopy of trees loom over us, hiding us from the outside. We look across. Then I take my thumb and wipe away your tears, and you wipe away mine. <laughs>